Spectator lives! Yes, we are finally in. We have the next game for you as soon as possible. This is going to be a free case spot versus Potato Salad. Let's get this underway. So, while we get everything all rectified, I will quickly talk you through what's going on with the picks and bans situation. We currently see that free case spot, the order side team, has gone with the Kepri ban and the Medusa ban. Sorry, the Medusa, the Bologna ban, excuse me. Well, Potato Salad has opted to fire back with the Hell and then the Sun Wu Kong bans. And the first lock in for free case spot will be the Saket, so that's going to be securing a high level jungler for them right off the bat and some good anti heal. That seems to be a fairly common theme over today is the battle of heal over anti heal, especially in the pick band stages. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I got the wrong god there. It's Saket, not Song Kong to be first picked up. But yeah. Um... I'm stop monkeying around. <laughs> Sorry. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh. Yeah, that's right. But yes, <laughs> so Potato Salad. They're going to opt to go with Geb Freya as their duo lane, I'm going to guess. I doubt they're going to put Freya in the jungle. Most Freyas, yeah. as you said earlier on today, I'll put a duo. So that is going to be their duo lane locked in. Probably. You could do some shit against. We'll have to see when they trade people. Free k spot are going to be picking up their own hunter in the form of at least hovering over Jibalonke. They haven't locked him in immediately, so he won't pop up just yet. If they do lock this in... They're going to need a support that can properly work with him. And because Kepri's off the table, your next best bet is someone who can secure kills quite like Kumba Kana. I'm not so sure. In I mean, my opinion, this is my opinion only. I believe Shablonke does not work in any dual lane unless you have a Sylvanas or a Kepri. Kumba Khan is... Probably just about may scrape it, just about, because the uh it's pretty much the support needs to clear and the support needs to pretty much help Shablonke keep uh, keep clearing the wave, be able to actually do enough damage to the enemy team to make sure that they're not going to go on the Shablonke, then also heal up the Shablonke or give him mana or just do something extra, of which Capri gives him enough protections to force them away. And Sylvanas has the heal and the um, and the uh, mana regen. It's a perfect thing for him. Whereas I don't think that actually most other supports work too well with Shablonke. That is true. I would like to see how the rest of the team is formed around this because they have that up to seven second CT chain with Kumbakarna. Yes. Well, they I could. Would... Give them some decent setup. We'll have to see how they actually pick around that. Potato Salad immediately see that potential objective control, and they're going to wipe Isis cleanly off of the map with that ban. And it looks like K Spot will be firing back with a Yanis removal. They don't want to give Potato Salad any more high mobility gods as is. They've already got two of them. Yeah, that's a very good idea. But that does mean that they will allow something like a Noir, as which they're hovering and locking in right now. Okay. Or I was going to talk about maybe the Poseidon, which we haven't actually seen today, surprisingly enough. It's very much been Yanis, Noir, Isis. I can't think of any others that we've seen. Oh, and Hell. Yeah. Now, with that Noir pick... That's going to be most likely their mid lane sorted out. Who is yeah. going in the solo? We'll have to see how K Spot pick, and then Potato Salad will have the advantage because they'll be able to counter pick. K Spot are hovering over Aphrodite and Vermana. They haven't locked him in just yet. Aphrodite will be locked in Vermana. They have to be very careful with this consideration on Vermana because if they do decide to lock in the Vermana, which will be locked in, Potato Salad. To just pick up Osiris. He's a perfect counter in theory. He can shut down the healing. He has physical mitigation on his passive. This could be a big problem for K-Spot. Since they just left Osiris wide open. Yeah, they completely left it open. Vimana is one of those gods which you do not want to have a good uh, counter pick to be playing up against you. You just want to try and make sure that you are in the best possible state you can be in. And there are a lot of gods that counter pick. Is that... Hello? That's an interesting one. Please uh, say they're doing it. My spectator isn't bugged in it. Please don't tell me my spectator is bugged and I'm hallucinating. Is that going to be a weird I love this solo? I will explain it once they lock it in. Okay. If they, and they do. I love... Ah. 
a wheelish solo. Explain. Okay, so a wheelish solo is effectively very similar to most warrior supports, except she or well, uh, warrior solos, except, except that she doesn't have as much tankiness. But in substitute for that tankiness, she has a lot of damage. She has quite a lot of mobile, well, sort of control on single target. This means that you can do a couple of very interesting things. For instance, if you have someone, um, well, first of all, Vimana is going to get pretty nasty. Well, is going to have a pretty nasty matchup against the Weirdish because the Weirdish is going to be able to clear out the lane a lot faster than the Vimana is, especially early on. Then, that means the Weirdish can just poke Vimana and do a lot of damage. Whereas Vimana, although well, he actually has quite a slow basic attack speed compared to a Weedish early on. So Weedish is going to get much more poke. It's going to be able to get the Feather Step off along with the um, the Cat Call. Moonlight and Charge. Then, yeah, yeah, Moonlight Charge. It's effectively just going to do so much damage to the Vimana while he's trying to clear that he's going to pretty much have to back every couple of waves. It's a very nice pick, and I love it. I think the most uh, the best pick that we saw was it was actually done... In Oceanic, in Challenger Cup, and it was done by Horizon. Shout out to you over there, uh, called Cleek, who sadly are no more, I believe. But he did it against mm. the Sun Wukong and got a triple kill on it. That I kind of shenanigans, we'll have to see if that pans out. The only downside I could see to this is, say, if Vomana gets the early gank rotation coming out from Soket and gets an early kill, he's able to get, say, Runeforged online on Mystical Mail, however he deems to go in itemization. A Wheelish won't be able to touch him with a 10-foot spear. It's going to be very hard to do, even right. with all the steroids that she actually has in the kit. So, I want to see how this goes into the game. We're about to hit 100 seconds into the anti-ghosting timer, so we'll be right back in, ladies and gentlemen, unless you've got anything else to add here. Um, all I want to say is apologies about it not showing up on the... Um... Base and band screen, but it's free case bot on the left, and potato salad is on the right hand side of your screen. So that's what's that uh, there. And sorry about that. I don't know why it didn't pop up. But anyway, we will go into a quick break. We will see you very soon. Don't go anywhere. See you in a bit. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for the next game of the day. This is going to be free case bot versus the potato salad. Let's introduce you to the team. So, coming down from the north in the Red Trunks, defending the Titan of Chaos, we have a Pool Shark on the support gear, backing up Sops on the AD Harry slash, of oh, really, Hunter role in this case. Raya, we have Fine OK on the solo lane, a Wheelish. We have Shaker on the mid lane, Nua. And finally, I Fates on the Jungle 4. And then over on the side of Free Case, what we actually see the circuit being played by Copperby, being quite aggressive. And I still haven't turned on sounds, sorry about that. Alright, so yeah, circuit was being quite aggressive, getting quite a few wards out. We see Aphrodite being played in the mid lane by Mindy Rocks 420. The mana going to be played by Motion and Full Penetration on Chibolonke to finish it off. Then Elper and Chacho on Kumba Khan, and that's actually quite a good dual lane for the side of free case ball. Yeah, they're going to be able to rattle out a decent bit of poke with you know the throne minion. They've got the things like the mesmerize, whatnot. Now, I like the fact that Elper and Chacho went put a ward, went back, analyzed the situation, then realized, oh hey, I can pick up some pots and blink because we know that I'm not going for an invade, so I don't have to do anything dodgy. So with that, smart use of the ward to identify and then itemize accordingly. Yep, as always, um, you want to try and get some sort of initiation fairly early on, especially with something like a Kumba Khan. And Blink is just one of the best things to do and get that. We do see Gev actually decided to go for a just standard level 1 boot instead of going for a Creeping Curse, which we usually see. So that'll be something quite interesting to know. We're also going to have to see if um, Free Case Bot are going to be actually able to clear effectively against this dual lane. As I said, Shablonki doesn't have as great that clear, but they're looking for damage actually. Full Penetration taking a lot worse damage. Sops on about half health already. Full Penetration in the same position as well. Elber Chacho even around that as well. They just took so much damage in that first engagement because they decided to go for each other rather than the minions. Speaking of the deeps, over in the solo lane, Fine OK taking huge ticks of damage from the Bluestone Pendant that Motion currently has. But at the same time, Fine OK 
doing a decent bit as well onto motion with it, but because motion's passive, he's able to safely get a little bit more protections, and of course he's naturally scaling and defensive because of a warrior. That isn't anything to really sniff at early game, because he also has the pots online. Fine OK is only really starting to burn through theirs now. At least for now, this game's got a lot of poke in it, but no real big dives as of yet. We had nothing like, say, the last couple of games where there's been action sub 1 minute 30. Yeah, I think it'll be a fairly slow game, although on the dual lane they're being pushed very far back. Pull, uh, pull Sharks uh, on quite low health. Full penetration needs to be quite careful, getting slowed out by Sops. Elbridge actually taking even more damage on about Ooh. 400 health. Geb, I don't know if you saw that little bit of Yeah, I saw well. that. Okay, let's it hope that, that isn't is a problem. The power teleportation. Yes, he, he's got a blink without needing blink. I don't know if you actually saw that video on... Um, uh, on Reddit. Oh god, uh, yes, I know blinking. exactly the video you're on about. Yes. That was oh. just, ill, ill, just, yeah. Ew. Several levels of no. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna see mid lane Thor and Turkey are just sitting here, getting a little bit of extra farm while they're around. They are level 5 on the side of 3k spot. They aren't on the side of potato salad, they just hit it. So now Thor can look and go for a rotation anywhere he wants to, and I wouldn't be surprised if he wants to actually look on the duo lane. It's about the right time that you should be looking for it, because they know that they're not going to have wards. All of the wards have just died from the start. He is looking to do something. The question is, what does he want to do? He needs to get some sort of thing off with his ultimate as early as possible, because it is a very strong ultimate early on. Yeah, he could try and go for a gank onto K-Spot's duo lane, but the Kumba kind of makes that hard because of the root and because of the sleep being able to interrupt things like Berserker's Barrage. That kind of raw stopping power without damage is hard to get through. And also the fact that Kumba Kana's passive makes it even more annoying to try and do anything like that because of, oh hey... If I can't get the AD carry, I'll just go for the support instead. Oh, wait, what do you mean he's not dead yet? He's at zero health. Oh, he's having a nap. Yeah, you, you've got to always take in uh, Kumbakana's passive. It's a very interesting one to take into consideration because it means that you actually do have to put a lot of focus on. Uh, the biggest thing is if you actually look at uh, Kretz, oh, actually on the right side, doesn't matter now, we're going to see Fine OK having to be careful around his own mana buff, trying to get it there. I fate's going to get taunted in by the circuit. Oh, yeah. Shablonke ultimate going to come out away from that is going to be I fate's as he goes up. Shaker is go also going to go into the ultimate as well. This isn't going to be good. I did press that. I don't know why it hasn't been doing that. So Shaker is going to get taunted out. Motion is going to fall down to fine OK after taking out his mana buff. And then it looks like Circuit is going to fall down, does get the buzz healing up. Ifates isn't able to find the ultimate as well. And now this is a little bit of a problem for Ifates to be in. He can't be here for too long. Going to be able to te and teleport through the wall. So that was a first blood, but not free k spot who were doing the initiation. But it was the potato salad, because Fine OK found the kill onto Vimana. Well, that's the first part of the game. And first blood will be drawn. But apart from that, nothing really too dramatic coming off that. It looks like the spectator house decided to throw in a little bit of interesting shenanigans oh. with the sync mode. Yeah, so, 147, 48, we'll just manually sync, it's fine. Okay. But, yeah, 40, 50, 40, 51, 52. We should be all be 55, good. 56, 57, Yeah, we should be perfect. 58. Okay. Alright, so, sorry about that. It's fine, that occasionally happens, it's no biggie. So, left side mid camps is going to be grabbed by Free Day Spot. They did manage to pick up the... Uh, did they pick up the right side ones? Well, I want to say on that the right hand side. Fine, okay. Oh, yeah, just I... getting knocked up into the tower. Very low on health and mana as well. Going to be forced to go back here. If mana wanted to, he does Copy. have his ultimate. He could go in. But the left hand side. Copy took a decent bit of chunking for the Berserker's Barrage. So much so that he is going to go back. He does have 2k gold in hand, but he doesn't want to get any more greedy until he's got some items online. If he had a little bit more power in the form of that Max Warrior Tabby and the beads, like you just picked up now, maybe he would have gone in on that. But without those items, that would have been a bit foolish. Yeah, you've definitely got to be careful about going in this early on. You can get kills early, you definitely can. There's always potential to get kills no matter what level you are. There is no one in this game that does not die early on. But you've got to risk yourself dying if you do go in too quickly. You've got to work out and try and predict whether oh, you can solo go in lane. And get out safe. Motion is taking a huge bit of damage, gets pulled back in from the knock-up. Fine OK is going to be picking up the kill there. 
That's going to be you the see second. Why I love kill. this. You okay, can see why I'll I love this pickup because it, it's one of those ones which a lot of people don't really expect. But a wheelish actually has a lot of damage. And back in the mid lane, though, we're going to see Kumbakana blinking and going on. I believe that's a Noir in circuit ultimate use as well. Noir wants to get up into her ultimate, doesn't even have time. She didn't even have her ultimate. She just got immediately wiped out. Copperby does fall down as well. Thor going to go into the air, looking for the Kumbakan who was already down in his passive. Nice, um, nice, and now it looks like Aphrodite's dead as well. That's three kills in favor to the potato salad. Uh, to the potato salad. Potato salad right now are completely smothering case bots attempts of any kind of counter initiation. Really well timed CC, multiple knockups coming out, and bear in mind, a wheelie she's going to be buffed next patch so she can pull people through without line of sight required. Jiblonke looking for a possible gold fury steal, but no, that is going to go the way of potato salad, and he will die for his sins. Can motion find something? No. We're going to skip. Tried to lazy back, but he knew he was going to get caught out of his state, so he just rolls off. He should yeah. be fine. I, I think you're a little bit further behind me again. Um, That's fine. 17, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. Right, so now we're going to see... Oh, that minion nearly hit Shrekka, actually. That could have been pretty vital for her, because she was on quite low health. She could have been caught mm. out. But, um, not going to hit... And now, final case, just gonna find his, uh, find his own mana buff, get that done, and basically be very annoying to this mana again. Sitting at 3 and 0 already. And this Thor, who I thought wasn't doing too much per se with his ultimate, or sort of really getting it off, actually has been doing a lot more than I thought, sitting at 3 0 and 1 himself. Over in the solo again, motion taking huge amounts of damage, enough to where he's forced to pop. The big baby to try and regenerate, but fine, okay, immediately pops the steroid in response. There's the knockup, and he did pop the steroid anyway, but a single feather step over the top is gonna put him into his grave. Okay, I'm gonna eat my words here, Wiz. Looks like we this solo is actually working out somehow. It's one of those few things that again people don't and people underestimate her. She is probably one of the better solo laners right now. Just because you can actually build a fairly tanky as well, and that works. So it means that she is effectively a second frontline character and also a backline character at the same time as she needs to be. It's so perfect. Now, it looks like... Oh, never mind, I'll talk about that in a second. Fates took a decent bit of chunking from Mindy Rocks. Bear in mind, Aphrodite's back off. Does a lot more damage than you originally expect. There's also the whole knockback element, or it's a slow depending on who she's linked to. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, as I was saying... So go on. Uh, well, I was just going to say, Aphrodite does do a lot of damage, but it's not enough to actually kill anyone outright. We do see Thor and a Wheelish looking for this mana, not going to be able to find this wall, only finding one tap of the hammer. So just going to back away. So okay, going to j jump in using that. Thor's going to go up into the ultimate. Who's he going to land on? If he is, Or is he just going to escape? I think yeah, escape is the best option. Yeah, just going to back off and run away to the... Uh, to the speed camp as Soket and the Aphrodite head back to mid lane. You don't want to get too greedy with a Thor. Yes, the extra power diving into mid the enemy team helps, but at the same time, you don't have any defensive items online, and you just mm. burn your. In theory, you're going to burn your first escape going in, your second escape to do damage. It's a similar conundrum with Yanis. Are you going to burn your portal? On escaping or for damage? It looks like Cumber's going in, gonna use the charge minion. Up he goes into the air. Shay's taking a good bit of damage. The game shield mitigates some of the cataclysm is gonna be used. Up goes Noir. Copy, meanwhile, goes in, deploys the Cobra's Kiss, and then uses the last breath to guarantee a good bit of damage, and it will be enough to kill, even with all the protections that were being bestowed onto Noir. But bear in mind that is true damage, so it was just enough to get through. All penetration, meanwhile. He's going to be forced to retreat. Maybe he wanted to try and grab something there, but with two people guarding the tower, there's no way you're getting into the back lines. On this right-hand side, though, Awilish was trying to go in onto uh, motion, but luckily, Copperby and Aphrodite were able to turn around fast enough and get into the solo lane to force Fine OK away. So, not going to get another kill, but they do have to try and shut down this, uh, th this Awilish very soon. She's getting in far ahead of where she needs to be. A, a Fedor Wheelish early game, and let's be honest, that's what she is right now. She's 4-0-2. Oh 
with a lot of net worth to her name, if we can actually pull up that graph, I believe her net worth currently stands at 6,453. Yes. That's a lot. And that kind of raw value, she's outvaluing the Thor jungle, who's doing very well. Speaking of value, the mid harpies on the left are going to get nabbed. Footballon Harpy is still up, though. Papa B taking a decent enough damage to where he has to retreat. Can't really have up mini rocks. He's taking multiple swings to the backside by Mjolnir. Looks like the middle team is not going to connect. Shockwave will, though, and a final Berserker's Barrage is going to put her under. And Most importantly, I think still has his ultimate, going to be looking for it as well. Going to try and go on to Copy B. Is he going to find it? No, the Deathbane away is going to keep her away just enough. Not going to find the stun either, just going to be forced away. Is going to get rooted on the side, but that's not going to matter. Oh, no. Over in the middle lane, though. A Weedish is going to pull motion off, and that's going to be another kill. Oh, another death onto Vimana. This is his problem. Oh, actually, what? Why is Spades back in here already? The uh, Circuit Ultimate went onto him, so he's going to go down. But they were able to find the Circuit in favor for it as well. Sops is looking for full penetration in the back line. Does have her, doesn't have the ultimate even. So this could be quite a bit of a problem. A Wheelish diving underneath tower. Going to find Elvore Tantra's passive. Not going to look for the kill though, because they know that it's going to be a little too risky. They're going to take too much damage for it. Yeah, that kind of dive is risky to do, but considering you have life, Sops had life steal there. He's got the Geb shield. He's able to go in and po and just go bam, 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 bam consistently enough to where he's able to sustain through it and live and pick up a kill at the same time. Yeah, Freya, this Freya Geb combo is going to become a right pain in case bot's proverbial backside, unless they get some kind of either anti-attack speed item or anti-heal online, they, we are slowly seeing the roots of that coming online in the form of Saket going for Heavy Mace. She's probably not going to go for the Brawlers. That's going to be a Jotun's most likely, yeah. but you could go anti-heal with that. Could. I'd be very surprised if it isn't a Jotun's just because she needs the you know, cooldown and the mana just to be able to stay in and do as much as she can. And most importantly, she gets the penetration to be able to start getting a lot of damage on her deathbane. It actually doesn't do much until you start getting a lot of um, penetration Pre and a lot of crit. So yeah, it's a, one of those crit. things you've got to be careful about. Yeah. Admittedly, yes, it's nice to have the anti-heal off of the ultimates, but at the same Ooh, time, oh, more anti-heal than that, that is required because you're not going to be around all the time. Go Fury is being attempted. Thor goes into the air. Fates is going to be looking to drop down onto Mindy Roxy. He will find it. Immediate Undyne will have to purge the CC, but took, even with the healing, a decent bit of damage. Nice use of the yawn there. Brochacho coming in to try and delay the damage coming out of Potato Salad. Soft is going to try and sneak away from the backside. Took a lot of damage. The charge almost kills. Shaker goes up into the air and finishes off Copy. Full penetration, meanwhile, gets a retaliation kill onto Fates, and now it's a 4 for 3. As penetration gets a double kill onto Pooey Shark, they're looking to drop it to a 4 for 2. As Shaker now is being put in, under the ire of free case bots assault, he is gonna drop motion picks up the kill that stomps her under his big baby boot. And now Gold Fury is gonna be under contention. That was a little bit of an early Gold Fury call, I think. I'm not sure it worked out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it didn't work out too well for them. Evidently. Um, but it was just a little bit too early. Everyone was still up on free case bot, and they used quite a bit already on to actually trying to burst down the Gold Fury. Oh, free case bot does take it. That was very close from the Aria. It actually does take out motion before he goes down. But that is the first death on him. That's probably not the best thing because you've just given a whole lot of gold. You've given the shutdown gold. And the bounty gold on top of that as well. Yes. Well, I mean, if you actually have a look at the gold difference, it's still in Potato Salad's lead. As long with the XP. If she hadn't got that kill, I think it may not have been as close. It would have, so, yeah, it would have crushed the threshold if it wasn't for that extra kill. Yeah. But now Free Case Bot actually has the ability to keep even, of which they are a late game team. Keep that in mind. They are a very late game team. Whereas Potato Salad have a very good early slash mid game team. There are a couple of late game carries like Freya on there, but still, there's not as much as Case Bot. Case Bot have a huge team late game with a Vimana, a Chivalonke, an Aphrodite, and a Circuit. Th those are insane. Later on, mm. you see Kumbakana blinking and getting the mesmerize onto Pool Shark. 
but not going to go off of it. Just going to sit there in the tower and let let them sort of do what they need. Double tap. Oh wow! Yeah, that was a huge double. Tap. It's, it's going to need effort to kiss those boo boos away because oh damn, does I face have a good bit of damage on that? He only even needs two items, and he just chunked Sir Ket down for half her health, literally. Well, I mean, if you have a look at the player damage currently, you can see Oe. This is at the top, but Thor very close. We do see a fight breaking out right now. Thor got um, knocked out. The, and so Nua went up into the air, going to go up into the air again with her own ultimate this time. Nice cataclysm, but Sir Ket was actually riding again at the time, so she didn't get stunned, and this could be the end of Pool Shark. Gonna go down. Thor up into the ultimate, though. Looking for them to land on someone who's going to be going to miss everyone actually and for, just be forced to get away. And going to for, and use the stun and backing off is everyone. They are going to catch out and the, the Freya instead. And now final case in the middle. Force to use speeds to get away. Free case spot. They can't go for the gold theories. It's already down, but they are going to go for their own buffs. Yeah, that's going to give them a little bit of time to free farm. The extra gold, of course, off of the kills. This game has had some decent team fighting. There's not been a lot of shenanigans later on in the game. Early game, of course, you know, we saw Fine OK bursting down for mana very quickly. But now, ironically enough, though, Motion has had enough time to push down that first tower of the game at the top right. That's the tier one of the solo down. Pre K spot are starting to find little victories here and there. Whatever they lose in one place pretty badly, they'll gain a good victory over here instead. If they get taken out of the team fight, another person will go split push, as we saw there. Yeah. So, case bot are at least doing good damage control in that reg in that regard. Yeah. Now, here's the interesting thing. I don't think we've actually talked about it yet. Um, Shaker, divine ruin. Yes. Now that, that, that would work pretty nicely because yeah, it she can apply nice. things easily. It works incredibly nicely to try and counteract the Aphrodite healing, but still it's only 40%. Actually, Aphrodite taking a lot of damage over there. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's only 40%. It's not going to do the entire health, uh, healing. She's still going to get a fair amount of healing out, and that means that also Shaker's got to try and save that ultimate to use in lane. Going to see Brochacha going, trying to look on someone. New ultimate going to come out. The healing reduction is going to be activated now, so Motion is not healing as much. Thor ultimate in the middle of all of them. That's a very low circuit who was getting in the middle of the Deserted Barrage is going to get out. Only just though. Ferrer's coming in from the side. And motion is going to be able to find fates finally. A Wheelish on the back line, going to get um, going to get destroyed by motion. Um, uh, Sops was uh, looking for copper, but he couldn't find the last couple of bits of damage he needed. And now Aphrodite is going to start healing up motion again, and they're just going to be completely fine. It was a one for two trade overall. Yeah, that kind of raw healing and protections is now starting to come into play here. We're seeing that kind of sustain outliving the big burst that Potato Salad can forward load with things like the Mjolnir double tap, the new one meaning explosion, and to an extent the feather step from a wheelish, the only sort of da big damage Potato Salad had that is sustained is the bang 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 repeated auto attacks coming out from Freya. Free k spot are now starting to get to that point, like you said, where their late game is coming to effect. And re-engage here by Potato Salad. You can see Teleport was coming out from Motion to try and get back in. They're looking to try and take out Shaker, get the mid lane vulnerable. They will find the pitch. At this point, Free K Spot now, they've turned up. They're grouping up and they're finding these picks really easily, it seems. Well, here's the thing. Shaker, because he went into the Divine Ruin early, he doesn't actually have the cooldown, so he doesn't have ultimate. We do see a pause coming out, but very briefly going to be on pause straight away. Or not. We'll Free find pause. out see exactly how long this is. Um, hopefully it shouldn't be too long, though. I haven't had any word from the um, from the admin yet. But, um, now, yeah, as I want to discuss saying, something. Well, I'll actually, no, go, my you, point you do your point first. You do your point yeah. first. So, Shaker doesn't have cooldown yet. She went straight into Divine Ruin, meaning that she um, doesn't... Well, yeah, she doesn't have cooldown. She needs the cooldown to be able to actually get the... Um, well, to get, sort of, the ultimate up earlier. 
But because it's not coming up earlier, that means Free Case won't know exactly when it'll be up, when it'll be down, and they can just turn on her, go straight away, and she has no way of getting out apart from beads, of which beads is not going to help her against Case Bot's composition because they have a lot of small, very quick stuns that they can just quick fire out and keep on going to st effectively stun Lucky. Yeah, they've got things like the Kumbakana Yawn, which is a f it's a mesmerize technically, but that would still stop you in place. They've got the knock up coming out of motion. They've got the uh, the Aphrodite stun. They've got Saket stun. All of that coming together. That's a lot of CC. That's going to make it hard for Anuwa to get away from quickly unless she picks up Blink. We do see the beads has been bought. It's tier three. There is space for a Blink, but it looks like K-Spot are looking for a cheeky Gold Fury, at least a bait. They're not yeah, really going in on it too hard. Yeah. Here yeah, we go. Kessler's it looks in... like Thor is going to go in. He might find the kill here on the pull shot. Yes, he will. No, Mindy Rock gets the credit for that. Not the four. Meanwhile, Sops is going to be forced to try and retreat as fast as Freya can possibly pump her legs, but no, full penetration is going to find the kill on that. This is the problem with Potato Salad having. They're going in drips and drabs. K-Spot are a literal death ball right now as they pick up another kill on this time with the eye fades. Yeah, now only the Noir and Fine OK are left alive. Fine OK is just going to just accept the fate and go take out the blue buff. Hey. Noir is also going to go to the back harpies. And now... There's just going to be a free Gold Fury to k -Spot. That kind of team fight is not going to work well for a team composed of a lot of people who pick. Yes, yeah. you've got that big AoE coming out of Fate. You've got AoE coming out of Nuwa, but Sops is not going to be activating Pulse Raw. It's going to be combined with the Irradiate, which gets rid of the AoE. Fine OK is going to be looking for single target pickoffs with the Gravity Surge. If they're just staying like that, outspread, K-Spot literally just crumple up into a death ball. They've got all their squishy people guarded by the Aphrodite, by the Vamana, by the Kumba, which allows full penetration to just go on a tear. And Kopabi is just able to dash around as he pleases, stealth if he wants to, apply poison where he wants to. And that kind of thing is going to allow Potato Salad to just start falling deeper and deeper into the hole. Just look at the graph here. They had a dominant lead over 4,000 XP, 2.5k gold, uh, between 5 minutes and 16. And now, all of a sudden, whoop, gravity switched, and now it's going up. And surely it's a gravity surge. Hey. Anyway, it took me a second um, to get that. It took me a second. <laughs> yeah, as far <laughs> as I can see, it actually, I think there's a lot of lag coming out on the server which is why the potato salad has paused. Not sure exactly how long it'll be. Hopefully it'll be very soon. They hadn't reported these pauses to an admin, so hopefully they can as soon as possible. So we can understand exactly how long it'll be. But what I was going to say, Geb needed some form of uh, heating reduction, which he's finally got. He also needs to not get completely CC'd out. That fight before the Gold Fury, I don't know if you were watching it, I said yeah. that Geb just needs to go into a cataclysm. I was about to say that Geb's going to look for a cataclysm. Then he just stopped. And then he got CT'd by, I think it was the circuit, then CT'd by the yeah. Aphrodite, CT'd by the Kumba Khan, and then by the time he was on 100 HP, he finally got the cataclysm out. Too late. That, it sucks to be in the position of that, like a tank. I'm play support mainly in conquest games the red times i do and to want to be able to go okay are you ready i'm gonna cc it's gonna be glorious my team's gonna love me and there's a woman on top of me and i've just been kissed and i'm not doing anything that's, most that's... people don't pick up magis or beads anymore on support so you are mm. vulnerable to cc yeah you are very vulnerable to cc especially if you're something like a gem you have to immediately blink ulti you if you don't do that you're not going to be CC immune for long enough to be able to actually try and stop anything coming towards you. It's a big problem that Geb has, and actually a fair amount of other supports have, so you have to go straight into your ultimate. You've also got to be careful, though, that you don't ulti too soon. Otherwise, you can have the Ionic problem of ulting before you blink, and that mm. can cause a lot of problems as well. There has been rumors going around, though, on Twitter, if you, according to people like Incon, that might actually be a bug in the system to do with things. Oh, but looks yeah. like right side, fine, okay, is... Did get applied with the poison, but the Fiend's broke her out of the actual throw, but is going to die anyway. 
Yeah, he wasn't fine, okay. Hey, the, at this point, the pause to pun ratio is now increasing. The more pauses happen, the more puns break out. So this is why you don't want to pause in games, otherwise things get very bad very quickly. Yes. But, I mean, right now, it's... Oh, actually, Ultimate come from iFate's going to come out onto Copper B. Not going to be enough to finish him off. The new R Ultimate came through as well. Again, not enough. Uh, now the Thor has to back off. That was two Ultimates he used for a kill, but it wasn't even a kill. You've got to be careful about trying to do that. And now the new Arsenal Ultimate's not ready... And not going to be ready for the next fight. She still doesn't have cooldown. So she's got to be careful about that. They do find tower on this tier one, or well, this tier one on the right hand side, but that's only just about enough. And then Sops actually gets taken down by full penetration alone on the left hand side. I had a look at that earlier. I didn't think that was going to happen. I'm surprised Sops was that far without ward coverage. And now the Shaker, down. yeah, now now Shaker's having to try and retreat. He's going to beads away the root, but gets launched straight up into the air. This time, not per volition, as full penetration gets another kill. This Shivalonke's passive is now officially fully stacked. Yes, and that's not what you want to see. You don't want to see a 30 extra physical power Shivalonke that's going to be running in your face, taking out all of your towers. This is going to be very problematic for Slater South to deal with. And as I said, they are uh, they are not a late game team. They don't really have the team fight that Free Kspot does. And so it looks like Free Kspot are just going to be able to take tower after tower. They're going to find get uh, get going to pull in nice ultimate from Find OK. Going to try and get Aphrodite under tower, but unfortunately she had the ultimate still, so she got immunity. Now everyone's fighting into different places. Motion's trying to slow down I Fates as much as possible. I think Find OK actually found out Copper B, but then. Goes down along with the Thor in the backside. And now up goes Geb, and he's probably gonna die for the fall. Yes, he will, but Penetration actually gets the credit for that. One cheeky auto attack ends that, but there's a massive minion explosion. It takes out the mana, but El Brochacho is gonna avenge his death by taking out Sops. That's gonna be a 4 for 2 trade in favor of free K spot. K spot are on fire at this point. They've taken this game and flipped it on its proverbial head. Are right, now kicking it down the throat of Potato Salad. Well, I mean, like I said, Potato Salad had a really good early game. A Wheelish does amazing in the laning phase against pretty much anyone. There's very few people she struggles against. But you need to actually have someone else there to sit there and help her engage, turn around, of which Thor is too far of a god away to be able to help her engage. Geb, although she does, uh, he does have the knock-up, and we saw the combination earlier in there. If you're going on the Aphrodite, that's not going to work out. You want to try and go for someone else who doesn't have immunity. You want to try and get someone who is easy to kill, to be able to make sure that they're in the middle of everyone. But if you don't have everyone, and you don't have a, a, an easy target to kill, then you're going to have problems, and it's just turning into a very unfortunate situation for the potato salads. They need to find a really good team fight. They need to get the Geb ultimate to work perfectly and combine it with the Thor ultimate, then the Noir ultimate as well to make sure that this, uh, this Aphrodite can't heal anyone up. They just need to work as a team and do what they can in the next team fight, otherwise it is most likely going to be a game to free case ball. Yeah. Next fight that's coming up is undoubtedly going to be by a giant. Both teams yeah. are already posturing. Did I just hear a Thor go up, or was that an audio glitch? I no, swear I just heard Thor. Glitch. Thor is still just running around ground. casually. Um, uh, unless this is just like one of the very weird ultimate glitches. Like I have to oh, hollow when yes, he Oh, yes, I remember that. That's an old one that's come back. If Thor ults in an area, you move away and come back, the ult sound doesn't play there. So if you come back to it later on, it's still there. It's like burying a sound. Mm. I, uh, there was this old Apollo bug when he first got released into the game that I had, and I've never been able to replicate it again. It got fixed pretty quickly, I think, and it was the fact that if you got killed during your uh, during channeling your ultimate, actually, sorry about that. So Kate's going to blink in, looking for someone, going to get immediately banished away, and uh, just disengage again from free K spot. But um, what it was, if you got killed during uh, while channeling your ultimate, you'd end up on the ground. Unable to use abilities, and you'd just be in your ultimate running around, and you couldn't even base attack either. Well, mountable chariots confirmed. That's actually a leaked thing from Paladins. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, free case spot. <laughs> we're ready to take out another gold fury, just even further at least. A couple of them went back to get more items. Now Shublonke has rage as well as 
the Fatalis Executioner, he's going to be putting out a lot of damage. If we actually have a look at his physical power, he is going to be at 205. So he's going to be dealing about 250 per uh -oh. basic. Gev going way too far though. Going to get caught he's out distracting. Second ultimate as well. He, he's trying to distract as they do gold, uh, as they do Fire Giant though. But I think that's they too late. They just pulled off. Oh, it that only works if your team can guarantee the Fire Giant with it. But they pulled away, so his death was in vain. And now 3k spot are going to be looking to force out Potato, look for a pick. If they can't get the pick, they're just going to walk back themselves and start Fire Giant sans an enemy team member. Yeah, Numb Lotion is actually doing a really good job of zoning out three of the potatoes out of it. They don't need to worry um, about this. Like, Motion is going to take a fair amount of damage, but it's not going to be enough to kill him. And now 3k spot just means that they get a free Fire Giant. And now they're going to look to invade uh, after the Aphrodite goes and heals up the mana a little bit more. Yeah. Now, this is the critical mass late game. I think it's getting caught out and just immediately bursted. It looks like that prediction you made right at the beginning of the game here, Wiz, has come true. That early game was great for Potato, but now K Spot are running riot all over Potato Salad structures, and they're going to be looking to at least do some decent damage to the Phoenix. They may get it, but with four members of Potato Salad up, that's going to be an issue. Yeah, Potato Salad just need to be able to try and defend this, but not lose their lives for it. They all need to be together at once, doing what they can do, rather than separate up as, and go as individual players. Gev's going to try and blink in, only going to find Aphrodite here. And the Phoenix falls down, getting the shield comes out from Kimba Khan. Going to ult up the Gev as well. Now, Gev is going down. There's no way that he can get out. He does get the weakened curse off before he leaves. Motion getting slowed out quite a bit, but not going to be finding, finding much. And now, Sop is going to get just destroyed by the back off of Aphrodite. Wish is just going to be able to jump over the wall. The Phoenix is going to go down again. What? That's two Phoenixes. Nah. New War Ultimate going to come out, but nowhere near enough damage to be able to finish it. And that's going to be a disengage. They're going to look for that right side after backing off, probably. Yeah, that is something that you want to be extremely wary of. That back off damage, the fact that it can come from two sources, well, it can hit two targets, it can't hit the same target twice, but it can hit two different people, and do two different effects can get a bit confusing in a fight, because you think, oh, if I, if I get hit, I'm just going to get knocked back, so I'll prepare for that, I'll get behind the person before it comes, wait, what do you mean I'm just slowed? Oh, it's the person to link to. That kind of analgorithmic abilities, the things that are different from each other, you want to be... A little bit wary of that going into fights, because in all the chaos of that fight, you know, with the Brochacho launching people into the air as Cumber, you've got the Jubilog Chaos that comes down with just noise in your ears. Hopefully, thank God, it's not the Vizela skin. And all of that, you don't notice something as small as, oh, I see a pink link, there's a character in front of me. What's going to yeah. happen? But I mean, let's just go and have a look at the XP and gold difference right now. And you yeah. can see this is very difficult for Potato Sad to come back. 3,000, well, no, not 3,000, 13,000 nearly in the lead as they look for the Awilish on the right hand side. And then 19,600 for the XP difference. They're just so far ahead. And they're going to get even further with this tower on this right hand side. They're probably going to look for the Phoenix as well if they can. But this time, everyone on the potato sa on the potato salad is up. They can fight. They need to fight together. They can't fight one v four or whatever. They just need to be together and fight this out. Face does not need to be there. Geb needs to be in the front line. Face needs to get ready to go into his ultimate straight up. The Shwalonki ultimate is actually going to proc. They're looking for the Phoenix as fast as they can. Thor, uh, uh, Thor Wall's going to be able to, uh, going to be fine. Motion going to be in the middle of all of them. Going to go into the ultimate. Nua ultimate going to come down slamming onto everyone, but they still have not killed anyone yet. It, only the Phoenix has gone down in this fight. Kumbakana ultimate going to be used onto the Geb. Geb's taking quite a bit of damage. He's still up though. Thor oh, going to go into the air. Looking down. Going to get a nice ultimate there. Motion going to be able to finish off full penetration. Going to find Sops as well in the back line. And now everyone is going to be systematically taken down. Fine. Okay. Going to be able to get into the world just, uh, just enough. Fate is going to fall down and now 3k spot are looking for the uh, titan as this is getting very low. This is going to be the game to 3k spot. I believe the term is called comeback. That is what we just saw. But it wasn't but... really a comeback. It was no, but, I just, mean, just put the it... gods. Just... No, but look at... I mean, just raw definition. Just look. If you look at the goal graph of that game, but it uh, had a pretty damn huge lead by all right. But then, slowly but surely, K-Spot took advantage of misplays. 
and then started stacking the lead slowly but surely, picking people off who were on their own while in the death ball that they created by grouping everyone up. And then they managed to pull off a nice goal fury here, a good four five man wipe there, and all of that slowly clawed it back. Then they got the lead, and then they were able to take five giants. They were able to, you know, motion zone three people out by his lumsome. And then they yeah. were able to close the game out. Yep. I mean, anyway, what they've done there? Um, well, I'm not sure what they can do, uh, they could have done, but they definitely should have tried and built slightly better in their team composition. Because I still believe that was all down to the fact that they built sort of pure sort of early mid game gods. You need to have someone to be able to shut down that late game, and more importantly, they should have gone for uh, someone with actual um, healing reduction as well. We didn't see Odin banned out that game. Mm. Yeah, Osiris is on the table up. as well. Exactly. Um, and although the Aweelish pick, I still love it. It's one of the greatest picks up, pickups. It didn't help against the Aphrodite. It didn't help against the Shavonke destroying everyone around him. It didn't help giving another target for Kumba Khan. All Kumba had to do is just knock up the Geb, and then they could wipe out everyone else, and then he'd come back down and be a left alone to be ta finished off. There was no real way that they could have come back in that, in my opinion, unless they had a, effectively a better draft. Hmm. And so with that, we should probably move on to the next game. I believe we have semi-finals up next. Yes, it I would be like to semi-finals. Say... Vicious and Delicious and Free Case Bot are currently in the, in the semis. We do not know who the next two will be. We will find out as soon as we can. They are still in their games. But for now, that's going to end it for us. We will see you in a little bit.